Okay guys, today we're going to be going over bushcraft for dummies. Now in this video, I'm not necessarily making it because I think anyone is completely dumb, but rather this is kind of the basic overview to bushcrafting. The definition to bushcrafting, to common tasks, to gear, to buy, what to avoid, and uh, as you're getting started, what to look for and what to watch out for. So. Without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and the Instagram. The support really does mean quite a bit. Okay, let's jump into it. Okay, so let's start off with the clarification of what bushcraft is. Now, sitting in a makeshift shelter, so it kind of gives you guys maybe an idea of what to expect or what's par for the course, but essentially bushcrafting is the art or practice of wilderness self-reliance. Now, this takes many shapes and forms depending on your capabilities, your physical abilities, and what your overall goal is. Because at the core of bushcrafting, it's to come out to enjoy the wilderness, to enjoy the solace, to enjoy peace and uh, usually quietness, and overall to enjoy your wilderness surrounding, whatever your wilderness environment looks like. Of course, everyone else's environment is a little bit different from Alaska, but that's the core and general uh, concept to what bushcrafting is. It's to practice wilderness self-reliance wherever you may be. So with that definition given, what are some of the common tasks to practice and that we usually practice? So the first one is going to be heavily reliant around fire. So this is anything from firewood processing. So going out, felling trees, bucking trees to size, if not, you know, sometimes cutting them up with saws. And uh, then of course, doing things such as batoning and feather sticking. So the first and kind of most pivotal uh, point is of course, creating fires, creating sustainable fires, and, you know, processing resources, making sure you, know, you have backlogs of wood that you can burn. And uh, in addition to this, of course, doing things like felling trees and bucking trees to size kind of goes hand in hand with shelter craft or building shelters. So uh, as you guys can see here, kind of in a makeshift shelter. And, uh, you know, that is part of bushcrafting is learning how to build shelters that protect you effectively from the environment and also give you an area to reliably store caches of uh, supplies. So whether that be natural resources like funguses, uh, sometimes food if done properly, of course resources like firewood and usually you will have a fireplace at your shelter. So those are some of the general uh, kind of tasks to practice is really learning how to hone your abilities to gather resources such as uh, wood and uh, building materials as well as honing your skills with fire starting starting and fire maintaining and so it's just as important to maintain your fires or learn how to maintain them as it is to learn how to start them this also can include a joinery or learning how to build joints to help craft different things ultimately uh you know there's a lot of fine tooth skills like crafting as the name kind of implies with bush crafting that you will learn uh, once again creating joints uh, creating notches to do things like pot hanging and uh, once again using things like dovetail notches to assemble either ladders or to assemble shelters is pretty important and you'll end up if you spend enough time bushcrafting probably learning those skills as well okay so vital tools for beginners now a lot of people uh, have their own ideas of what you know you should get as a beginner but generally with me and I know this kind of sounds contrary because I do have a lot of expensive knives and I do like my knives but I collect knives as kind of a hobby and passion so just because I have really expensive knives does not mean you need to but what I would say is your key three tools are going to be a hatchet like you see here GBA wildlife hatchet your saw which should be moderately sized i would say something anywhere from a silky gomboy this one's a 210 all the way up to something like a silky big boy you don't have to go crazy or excessive this little gomboy has done quite a bit and still continues to do quite a lot of work and uh, is very effective so just because the uh, saw is smaller don't think that it can't do quite a bit so anyways you want a hatchet a saw and of course you and of course you want some form of knife now i pulled out a budget knife just for example 
of course I do have expensive you know custom uh, bush crafting knives as well and I do really like those but for a beginner I would say start off with a budget knife and if say you have let's just say $300 to spend on tools on tools I would say try to go for something like a 50 to 40 dollar solid knife do your research things like the Condor Terrasaur the Mora Bushcraft Black the Mora Kunz Bull uh, the C uh, Cold Steel SRK maybe the SRK Compact uh, are going to be pretty good knives to start off with uh, most of Mora's lineup for sure like I said the Condor Terrasaur will be really good starters or beginner blades so i would say start off with a budget beginner blade uh, you do not need to invest in something crazy expensive to start off with knives are probably one of those tools that uh, people put a lot of money to into in the beginning and the biggest thing when it comes to knives as much as i hate to say this because i do have a lot of knives but knives are probably one of the most uh arbitrary things to spend money on because real realistically your money isn't buying you a lot of performance when you start to go past 100 150 dollars so anyways uh, i would recommend doing you know spending so if you had 300 dollars, spend 50 dollars on a solid you know uh, bush crafting blade so then i would say spend another 50 to 70 dollars on a really good saw usually a silky if you have to the baco laplander is probably the best budget option but really i would recommend go with something like a silky because their performance is very good and very hard to beat they are on the more expensive side of saws but they are really worth it and trust me you will not regret it i've had a lot of folding saws in my time and silkies are undoubtedly the best saws i've used for folders okay and then lastly like i said if you had like $300 to spend, $250, $300 to spend, I would spend the rest of it on a really solid hatchet. Because when it comes to buying hatchets, uh, there are a ton of options and there are a lot of budget options. But really, at least in my opinion and from my experience, nothing beats the more expensive hatchets. And you can get you can get into good hatchets or good axes for around 150 to 200 dollars and these are hatchets and axes that not only are they very effective as aforementioned but they are really going to stay with you in your journey and uh, not only are they going to be solid when you start they're going to be solid as you grow as a bush crafter and the nice thing or the reason why i do stress having an expensive axe is when we talk about the tool breakdown of like what tool am I going to use the most when it comes to most bushcrafting tasks as we just elaborated um, a lot of bushcrafting tasks like serious bushcrafting tasks are gathering resources so whether that's you know funguses and different natural materials or whether it's wood for fires most i would say probably 80 percent of what you're going to do is going to be between your hatchet and your saw and i would say of these two probably 50 percent of that 80 percent is going to be done with your hatchet depending of course on what your environment is there might be a slight difference you know so you might end up using your saw a little bit more but by and large i would say most of what you're going to be doing as a bush crafter is going to be done with a hatchet slash axe so if you really start and invest early in a good hatchet you will very much you will not regret it i can promise that you know knowing what i know and having the expensive knives that i do this little 40 dollar condor pterosaur does everything that my $250 BRK Bushcrafter does. Now, I do like my BRK Bushcrafter a lot, and it certainly has better edge retention, better corrosion resistance, but this, the point is, this knife will work. Whereas I know from experience using cheaper hatchets and more expensive hatchets like this GBA Wildlife, the wildlife just blows it out of the water. There's a few reasons why, and that is usually the edge is much sharper. You don't really have to put much work into it as a beginner. And uh, the other thing is the the ergonomics on 
these more expensive hatchets like the GBAs are very squared away. It's very comfortable and, and it's much less fatiguing to use a properly squared away hatchet. And that's one of the things that's like ergonomics when it comes to axes and hatchets is a much larger deal because you're repetitively swinging or repetitively chopping with that tool. So if, an, if a handle on a knife is uncomfortable, you can, you know, kind of reposition maybe a little bit to get around that uh, uncomfortability. But if you are swinging a tool or if you're chopping with a tool, it's going to be much harder to reposition in a comfortable way. Once again, too, with uh, saws, don't go cheap on them because the more expensive saws are, they cut much better and much faster and much easier and they don't bind so, or they don't bind as much or as easily. So what this means is there's less friction and it's less fatiguing to use them. So ultimately, if you really do go with a quality saw and a quality hatchet and or ax, from the start you will have a much better experience because these tools will not fatigue you out as easily now of course whenever you are beginning you will probably get fatigued quite frequently just because there is a lot of moving heavy pieces of wood heavy lumber uh, there is a lot of physical labor to this once again if you're or a small cord of wood for you know you to burn over the course of a night it's going to be a lot of wood it's going to be pretty heavy so it's not going to be a Bushcrafting as a whole is an exercise, I would say. Um, it's kind of like CrossFit in a way, but it is definitely worth it. And having the higher quality saws and hatchets make the job that much easier. Okay, so we've talked about the critical gear. Now, just a few more points that I would say to or mention is that you are going to want to have a container. I like the Vargo bot, but just any type of kind of bot or any type of bottle or pot that you can cook out of is going to be important. Once again, if you are collecting natural resources, hunting in conjunction to bushcrafting, you're going to need to have the right equipment to cook those things up. Something that I would recommend here, once again, it does not cost a lot of money, is the Boy Scouts of America mess kit. And especially if you are running by yourself, the mess kit is great. It's less so it's not as good if you are running with another person and that person, you know, you need to cook for two people. But if you are running by yourself, the BSA mess kit is my go-to and I actually love it so much. I have a handful of them and they are super cheap. They are, of course, you can't find them brand new, but you can find them quite readily on places like eBay and Etsy. So if you are looking for a budget kind of cook kit or something as a beginner, or even not as a beginner, I would totally recommend the BSA uh, mess kit or Boy Scouts of America mess kit. It is really solid and I definitely uh, enjoy my several of them. Uh, but that that's what you're gonna want. You're, you will want a solid container. You're also gonna want cordage and you're probably gonna want to you're also probably gonna want a backpack. So, you know, as we mentioned, you know, having an ax or a hatchet, a saw, a knife, a container to cook out over a mess kit, and potentially, you know, some food rations and stuff, it all kind of adds together and you're going to end up needing a backpack at some point. Also, depending if you're hiking in or packing in your shelter, or if you're packing in a sleep system, that will also be determinant of you're gonna want to pack, but at some point you will likely need a backpack and a rather moderate sized one. I have a hard time necessarily suggesting what size of backpack will be right for any one person because it's very dependent on how much equipment you're taking. Once again, if you are going minimalist, I know some people that just wear things like sling packs because they really just have their base level equipment and they use a hammock as a sleep system, which is very small, lightweight, and compact. So if you do that, you know, you might be able to get away with a very small pack. My go-to for many Many years has been the Camelback Lynchpin, which is unfortunately discontinued, has been discontinued for a while, but it's about a, I think, 3,000 cubic inch pack. It's like a medium sized pack. It's definitely not small, but it's also not huge. Um, but it generally carries everything I need. And I also have the ability to strap things to the bottom. So if I need to pack in a sleep system, I have the option to do that as well. But either way, you will want to pack. And so just Kind of going back over it, you're going to want a knife, 
a saw, a hatchet or axe, a container, some kind of mess kit or like a, a bot or bottle or pot. Uh, and you're going to want cordage and a backpack to carry everything in. So those are the basic ingredients for the equipment that you want to carry in. And uh, yeah, so it's essentially bushcrafting in a nutshell. If you're looking at getting started, there are tons of resources out there. I have videos on bushcrafting and there are, I think, even better videos on bushcrafting out there that exist. So, you know, definitely YouTube is your resource. There are also books published by many people. I love the book Bushcraft by Morris Kohansky. It's a very solid uh, book and definitely recommend checking it out. Anyways, guys, has the mosquitoes continue to eat me? I will say God bless and I'm out.